What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko. Back with Mateo here. Hello. And he was playing Rika Sun Avalon at today's 3v3. And I wanted to do the deck profile, mostly because I think this deck is really cool. And uh, I think he's perfected it. I, I'd like to think so. I would like to think my teammates weighed me down. <laughs> Don't go into time. Yeah, okay. Actually, though, the true downside of playing this deck for anyone that like is looking to play it is your opponents are going to take three years to read all of your cards. So it takes a long time before you can actually go through everything. Yeah, but the good thing is, most of the time this deck will win in time. Unfortunately, today I got into a couple of situations where it was like, I couldn't win in time. Uh, but again, I think the deck is really good. Uh, outside of time, I would have liked to think I would have gone undefeated. There's one I know I would have won for sure. The other one was a little dicier, so I'm not going to say I would have won it for sure. But yeah, I think this deck is really strong. All right, so let's get right into it. Yep. Uh, easy first card, three genus loci, one card starter, one card combo, it just does everything. I've seen some people cut this down to two, uh, and just play three unexpected die. I don't personally like that, just because I like consistency. You want to see this card as much as humanly possible. Uh, and then you play the one twin. It's a garnet, but it can do stuff in hand, it depends on the game state, but it, again, you have to play it for your combo. You can side this out game two, three going second uh, for just more board breakers. You, For example, uh, it makes siding in the Alt Slayer brick really easy because you just take this out plus a three of like rivalry going second and you can just put it in. Yep. Um, three pedal, this card's insane. Um, you want to pull it off your combo. You don't mind normal summoning it. Obviously this is better because you can pull this out of your hand later on in the turn or out of your deck, um, but this card's absurd. It uh, basically searches any monster or bins any monster. And then every end phase where you only control plants or no monsters, it just keeps summoning itself back. So it's permanent re, uh, like permanent resources. Uh, three princess. Um, again, new card. All the new cards are broken in this deck. Um, but this card came out in Pope. Uh, graveyard negate. So it's a good part of your end board that is really hard to interact with because A, it shovels itself back for cost, so you can't chain called by to it. Oh. And B, it tributes uh, for cost. So it can either trigger your own stuff or with the field spell, it can tribute your opponent's stuff for cost to negate it. Uh, like for example, during, not for today, but during the YCS, my opponent activated Curious, I'm like, okay, tribute Curious for cost, and it's like, oh shit, I forgot you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, two Moodon, I used to play this card at three, uh, but it doesn't exactly do anything by itself, and again, you can pull it off your combo, so it's not a huge deal to play two of it, um, but sometimes it is really nice to have. Uh, it's a spell trap searcher, and all your spell traps are really broken, but they all search each other as well, so that card's just good, and then the one ofs, uh, all of these are either combo pieces, or just... Again, uh, Lone Fire kind of plays into Ash more than I'd like it to. I'd love to play three of this card, but uh, again, you can just pull it out of your combo and then use it to tribute something that isn't Lone Fire, funny enough. It can do that. People always forget. I'll contribute go, any plant, right? Yeah, any okay. plants on your field. So you can just tribute something else and everyone like looks into them. Oh, okay, good. Yo, know, speaking <laughs> of, speaking of, I, I know that interaction happens, but a lot of people are also not prepared for this deck because they don't no, really no. know what it does, right? This does do nothing to this deck, is the big thing. Um, like, the only light dark in your entire deck is Jasmine, and by that point, it is way too late. Okay. Yeah, it, it's just it's just really nice. All right. But yeah, these are all important one-ofs. Uh, sometimes you like to see people playing two of this. I don't hate that, but again, it sometimes just does nothing in hands. Uh, and then today, mostly just to try it out, but I... Uh, one, I felt like I needed the power. Uh, I played the Therian Engine. It does feel sort of bad to play like one live card and then two like slightly less desirable cards. But if you don't play these, you kind of get blown out of the water by things like Lightning Storm and Evenly. Yeah. Uh, like spell trap based board breakers will screw you over really hard, especially ones that clear a large amount of stuff. So these help you, you know, not hard lose to those. The combos are a little bit uh, like higher ceiling as well if you have access to these cards, yep. uh, which is always really nice, especially into a format of, you know, like tier and random stuff that are really, really strong. Uh, three Glamour, uh, Rhoda on Crack Cocaine, and Methamphetamine. Oh my uh, god. It is just so good. Um, like, if you don't tribute to activate it, it's just Rhoda. If you do tribute, it's Rhoda plus add a plant of the same level. Any plant. Uh, like, you can, for example, tribute a thing, add Genus Loci plus Petal. That's just FTK. Okay. Um, so this card's insane. Uh, three Con Con. I've seen people cut this down to two. I think they're wrong, because this card is absurd. It's not hard once per turn to tribute your opponent's cards. So it helps you break boards super, super easily. Um, and it's kind of hard to interact with because there's a lot of monster-based interaction in the format. Yep. Uh, but there's not a lot that deals with ConCon Con, except for like the tier element field spell and then random stuff there. But a lot of people don't know what your cards do. So they'll just... Hit know, the wrong thing. They'll hit the wrong thing or they'll hit something too early. Like if you normal Lokai, they, that will bait out like almost all interaction because the old version of this deck where it was just like Lokai cards, no Rikas, was just gas off of that alone. So people yeah. are really scared of it. Now we have three unexpected die. This card's obviously insane. Full combo by itself plus extra. This is the like enhanced version of the combo because you can like add back lone fire, then normal it right at the end of your combo to get an extra end of gate. Okay. Um, two sewing. Uh, for the longest time, I played only one of this card. But the main reason you want to play this is if you have multiple copies, 
and you draw one, it still doesn't feel too bad because it is still Itali, but you can still make Dryas with a random like level four plant, just not trigger its effect to search, and then activate this for a pretty decent size plus. Okay. And then being able to have one in hand and then still legally activate the Dryas to try and search for the second one, they hand trap you with like an Ash and you go, okay, I drew it anyways, and you win. Okay. Um, and then something I tried out today for the first time that I really liked was three Prosperity. Uh, the extra is really, really tight in this deck, but this card is too broken that it doesn't matter. Do you always go for three or six? Three. Never six unless you really, really need like a board breaker or like something crazy. Okay. Um, but most of the time you're doing three. I'll show the three that I usually go for when we get to the extra, but this card is just too broken. Okay. Uh, and then for back row hate, I ran two Cosmics and one Duster. Uh, I wanted things that out Mystic Mine under Runic and then just mass back row removal. This card's just really good. Yep. Uh, just pretty standard. Called by because it's called by. I don't think I need to explain it, Bennett. Um, three rivalry. <laughs> I wanted it at three. No, 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 no. It, it either has to be at three or zero. That's yeah, the, that's I, the thing, I, I can right? agree with that. Uh, rivalry is, I mean, it's rivalry. Like <laughs> You're playing all plants, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my entire deck is plants. The only thing that comes up is with Sheet. Uh, there's a bit of an awkward ruling where Sheet basically uh, steals your opponent's monster and then makes it a plant, but you can't activate it under Rivalry unless you're targeting a plant. And the only plant in the meta is like Dragos Topelia, but it's still like, this card's too broken. It makes two. it a plant after you take it already, yes. right? So oh, you can't so activate why. it. Okay. Uh, it's a little weird, but again, it, I actually did it un under Rivalry to steal Dragos Topelia today, which was really funny. Um, but yeah, okay. that's the only reason that Rivalry is like slightly less optimal. Like Therians are good, but like, I mean, Therians, you can always just use the Negate and flip the Rivalry. Yeah. Uh, it's a little like tiny bit of anti synergy, but it's worth it because our Rivalry is just so good. All right. Uh, moving on to the extra, uh, three Dryas. Uh, the third one comes up, uh, in certain combo lines to, uh, extend through like popping your first card. So that's why I like playing that. Uh, one healer and then one thrasher. Uh, Thrasher enables you to do a one-card OTK line instead of healing 300 more with a healer to three-use gender combo, which doesn't really push you past any, like, major boundaries except for, like, access code plus 3k beater, which isn't super big right now. Now that Chaos Ruler's gone, there's not, like, that many big 3k beaters that you have to be worrying about. Yep. Um, two Jasmine. Uh, the second one doesn't come up in standard combo, but it comes up if, you know, it randomly gets removed from the field or it gets negated. You can just go into a second one effect and Do you ever going. use Jasmine or the third one for Prosperity? Yes, those are, it's, uh, I guess I can show it now. It's just these two plus the brick for Ultimate Slayer. Okay. Uh, these are usually the three I'll send for Prosby. Um, unless I already know that I will you know, need one of them, but yeah. Uh, the only time it gets a little icky is when you side in Alt Slayer, you still kind of want to keep Prosby because you want to dig for the Alt Slayers. Yeah. Uh, and then it gets like a little bit situational with your hand of like, okay, what do I not have access to in this hand? Um, so it's a little, uh, that's where it gets a little icky with Prosby, but it's just such a broken card and it lets you see everything. Yeah. So um, I like playing that. And then Dun Stephanie, I don't know why they thought this card was okay to print. It just says mill three and summon all the plants. That's crazy. And then it has a level modulation effect that is very relevant in a lot of different game states. It basically targets a plant in your grave and makes everything it points to the level of that plant monster. Oh. Uh, so you can, for example, you don't have a ton of fours, but your four is your best exceeds. Uh, so you can just target like a six and an eight and they both become four and you can go into the best cards in your deck extra. So that's definitely ideal. Uh, then we play the Melia Spengalancer, uh, just free extenders into a pretty damn good boss monster. The only downside to Bengal Answer is you do lose a little bit in time, but it, you should be winning the game off of summoning this in the first place, so it's really nice. Okay. And then for the Exceeses, it is two Strena. Uh, I'm so tempted to play this card at three. Uh, this card's so good. And then one Teardrop and one Hyperiton. Uh, if you don't have Alt Slayers, uh, your two options for the next card, uh, you can either play Super Poly, but that gets a little weird with the targets. But I would either say third Strena, or you can play Alse, uh, the... Sylvan Rank 8. Yep. That card is nice for adding spell traps and like random stuff that you don't want to deal with. Um, but those are your options if you're not playing Old Slayer. Uh, heading real quick into the side, nothing too, too crazy. Uh, one Pank, one Evil Twin Brick, and then one Red uh, Pointer since it's at one. Uh, these are just the three one ofs. They're just, again, you have to play this one. And then I wanted two other like power one ofs, and these are just the best ones on the market. Uh, three Old Slayers, card outs. The entire sprite board by itself. Yep. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, this outs the entire tier board by itself. This outs the entire tier board by itself. And then this is mostly for like random runic matchups and then also evenly matched uh, I am scared of. Uh, so this card, I didn't cite it in a single time today, mostly just because I 2-0'd every matchup. You went at the time a lot. 
I went into time game one against Th Therian tier today. Yeah. Um, and then I, like, the other two games I played were both me going second both times and me winning both times. Yeah, so you went inside so, of him going second, of course. Um, yeah, there's very, very few times. Maybe against Flu. But, like, this is, like, a Flu card. It's an anti-evenly card, and it's a... Uh, anti-runic card. Yeah, anti-runic card. Because they can't legally activate destruction while this is on the field. So they can't even try and pop it, uh, which is really nice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, relatively cookie cutter. The dex combos are pretty labbed out by this point, but the Therian stuff makes it... Just that little bit higher ceiling where if you have, you know, uh, Lokai plus any really, like, half-decent plant in hand, you can just go, like, basically the trap part of the combo and the Therian part, which if you have all that set up, you basically win the game. Um, Your main deck's 40 on the dot, right? Yes. 40 okay. on the dot. Um, you can expand that a little bit. Like, for example, instead of Prospeast today, I was tempted to play Bistids. Um, oh, yeah. I thought you were trying to yeah. They don't... No, in the, in the main deck, uh, just because... There was a lot of tier at our locals. The, the, the entire room basically was tier. And then it was tier and flew. birds. Yeah, yeah, tier and birds. Barely any sprite players. Um, but I figured Frosties are more consistently applicable in a lot of different matchups. I was originally going to main the evenly match just for the tier matchup, but they're all playing the in high spirits into Barone version, which makes that a little less uh, ideal. But again, you can tech out most of the side deck for your specific locals. If there's a lot of flu players, hell, you can even play like Lancia. If there's a million tier players, you can even play like different dimension grounds and that kind of stuff. You don't need to play Lancia. Oh, You're the bird player, that's why. You don't. No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, si side, deck, side deck is always up to, like, yeah, not it's even personal preference, area. but yeah, it's up to your area as well, right? But I think the main is relatively solved. You can shift things like the evenlies in. You can, If you don't have Prospies, you can play Bistids. I know those are also a little pricey, so you can play, like, even, like, Imperms or Ashes. They'll all do the same Any sort hand of thing. Any hand trap, something that just kind of... Just yeah. non-engine. Yeah, again, suit your non-engine for whatever's around you, but this is what works really well for the... Saga area, so there's a lot of very good players, unfortunately, in this area. Yeah, yeah, this is a very but good uh, yeah, this is basically at least my early take on the deck. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to play it at at least in my opinion, uh, opinion like maximum efficiency when it comes to the engine. Uh, and I was pretty happy with how it performed. I think the only misplay I made all day was forgetting that triple burst has an effect on it. <laughs> that's, oh, that's okay, it. Yeah. But again, not, that game I ended up still winning anyways. Um, but then we just sort of gave the win because you know. We were paired down, but or paired up, but I talk about it in my vlog, so watch yeah, the yeah, vlog. Yeah. Go too. watch the vlog. Go watch the there vlog. There we go. Go watch the vlog. All right, thank you, Mateo, for the deck profile. Appreciate you. I think that's really cool. I think it's just something that not enough people talk about. Yeah, the, you're gonna get FTK by people not knowing what your cards do because yeah. they're gonna take too long. And then you go into time, <laughs> Sag. But I mean, this deck should win in time due to healer uh, most of the time. But like, the, for example, the positions I was put in today were like a 45 minute game one against tier that ended with like third droplets off the top into battle phase, which was. Unfortunate. Just like, enough damage. It was reasonable, but yeah. Alright, well, thank you. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Mateo, shout out for the nice week of profile. And with that, Spanko and Mateo signed it out. Peace.